Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about how I determine if something in our Magic the Gathering community is a scam and what factors I look at, as well as going over some YouTubers, Patreons, Kickstarters, Indiegogos, and just using that metric to determine if it is a scam or if there was something that doesn't make sense there. So when I'm, I look at it, it's three different points. It's A, does, is there value? Does the subscriber get value back? Now, in the case of the monthly magic box, the value should be $25 or $20 worth of Magic the Gathering material. People were saying that it was $40, $45. Many YouTubers were saying that. When in fact, I gave them the links where they could buy that $40 binder or that $20 binder for $2.19. So at that time, they knew that the value wasn't there, but they continued to promote it. Secondly, are they actually delivering? So in the instance of PicoTrade, only after Reddit really got after them, $60,000 later, almost $60,000 later, a year later, they finally started on developing it, I assume. So was it actually delivered on time and was it delivered at all? The $9,000 of leftover money and the monthly magic boxes PayPal, I have pretty strong confirmation that none of that was actually delivered to, none of those boxes were delivered. Although of course they delivered it to the YouTubers and the MTG celebrities promoting that box. So, and lastly, does the person put in their own money? Does that person believe in the product enough to spend their own money or are they just spending your money? And is there some type of misrepresentation of, are they misrepresenting that they don't have money when in fact they do have money and they're just using your money to fund their project and if their project go, let's say PicoTrade just knocks it out of the park and they do it for Pokemon, they become the biggest, they get IPO, this is crazy, but let's assume they get an IPO and guess what? They didn't give equity to you guys. Equity is still with those four guys and that dog, right? That picture of those four guys and that dog, uh, which they wanted to put themselves out there as this you know, smart, trendy technology company, which I just have a problem with. So let's then talk about some people's channels and these are people who are not scams. I'm going to not directly talk about people who I feel like is, or I don't have enough information to determine if they are a scam or not in my definition. So people who are not scams, I will start with Tolarian Community College. The dude has just been the nicest dude. He's never stirred up drama. And I can tell you, we've always had drama. When the biggest YouTuber ha in the past so what, before Tolarian became the biggest YouTuber, we had other YouTubers who were bigger than him at the time, and they would always be in these battles and these long drawn out, you know, tweets at each other. They're still tweeting each other as probably as I even make this video. And there's no reason for that. There's absolutely no reason for that because we are a community and when one of us grows, we all kind of grow a little bit. So good dude brian is a good dude and i have a lot of respect for him and it's not really in my opinion is absolutely not a scam and his patreon is 100 percent legitimate because he presented a business plan he said hey this is what i need this money because i'm going to leave my job or the job has left me and I need this money to support my family, but I'm gonna make better videos and this is my business plan. So if I were a banker of some type and he asked, came up to me to ask for a loan, I would say, huh, Brian, you've been really honest and yeah, I believe in this. So here's this loan and here's some money. And, or if I was an investor, I would invest, I would personally invest in Tolarian Community College. I've invested in companies before uh, and they have not been successful, but, he has everything that an investor would really want. He has the a business plan, he has a purpose, and he laid off really honestly that he is no longer working at the community college that he used to work at, which is not easy to admit. 
It's not easy to say I'm unemployed and I really just want to make a Magic Gathering channel. That's not easy. And that's how I know because the sacrifice and on that point comes that he's sacrificing his career opportunities to do Magic Gathering. And that is very special. Would I ever do that? Hell no. Hell no, right? But he's doing it and we should support him. Next, uh, Rudy from Alpha Investments, uh, $10 monthly subscription, and then you can buy boxes at distribution cost. Cost. You might be like, oh, it's a little higher than distribution, but with shipping and stuff like that, it's pretty much close to distribution. That's why I get boxes. Like, I used to have to buy at volume from my friend's store and this other local store in Humble that I'm not going to talk about right now. And I used to buy lots of crappy stuff like Weiss and Vanguard and I just spent X amount of money and then I could buy boxes at that rate. Like, had Rudy come along earlier when I was still buying tons of boxes, I wouldn't have to do any of that song and dance. I'd just be like, okay, blank you, I'm going with this online dude who's <laughs> still going to get... So, I, as many of you know, in, a, in the past, I was able to buy boxes at distribution. And yeah, I save a little bit of money on shipping, but the other stupid stuff I had to buy with the boxes, oh, you know, Card Fire Vanguard didn't go so well. Just, do you want these promo packs for 25 cents? I'd be like, uh, okay, fine, give me the promo packs. Oh, do you want these Weiss promos? Oh, okay, put, put, that's why I have so many of this stuff because I had to buy them to get that price. Now, if you're just telling me, oh, very simple, $10 a month and then you can buy this price, yeah, that, that would have been, that would have solved the problem that I had and that's solving a problem many people have is I want the cheapest cards at the cheap, you know, right now. So that's what I think about Rudy. The deal is very good and I know the numbers and the, it makes sense to me. Uh, next, Christine Sprackles, Sparkles, and I don't actually know her real name, which is kind of funny because I made a video about it. Uh, well, I guess I, I do know her real name. I just forgot it already. So I've never met her. I've never talked to her. I've never tweeted. I've never tweeted. We never had a conversation on social media or otherwise, right? I saw the video and MTG headquarters criticized her for crying in the video and being a woman in the video, which... I'm not even gonna get into that. That's that's way out there. But I think crying in the video is perfectly fine. I think it takes a very, very strong personality to say I'm living at my parents' trailer and then show you know the tra trailer so we know that it's real. Not that we needed to know that, but you know, obviously it adds a lot. And then say, oh, I only have $40 in my name. I had to move back to my parents. Moving back to your parents, I would assume at any age would suck, right? Can you imagine? I mean, they would do laundry. I guess the laundry would be great. And then the food would be really good. And then they would clean for you, which is excellent. Which none of, but like you could hire a maid for that if you really needed to. A anyway, b besides the point, that video was honest. And you know it's honest when someone makes a sacrifice, right? It, it's becoming a sacrifice, and a sacrifice isn't just money. I, I believe in this enough because I spend my own money because not everyone has money to spend on what they are passionate about. I work with many graphic designers. I work with many artists. I own a marketing agency. I would say in my past agency in this one, half the people there are very bad with money, like extremely, extremely bad with money. Like you can get them to like a negotiation table and unless you are there to tell, hey client, dude, this is the price. They will like negotiate down and then be and demean their, debase their own work. So I know the artist philosophy and she offers something unique to our community. Uh, something that it's not solely unique, but it is unique enough that I think about and say, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, it's nice to have. And maybe in the future it will expand because this first person did it. But I, no problems with the article, uh, no problems with the video, no problems with the way that she presented the video. And I think we should support her as well. And I really hope that she makes it uh, because it would be good for our community. So those are the three people that, uh, examples of people making money from the community or getting donations from the community and not being scammy at all. Now, when you talk about Pico Trade and monthly magic box at the other end, 
that's kind of like we know, okay, we gave them $60,000, they didn't deliver on time, something is wrong. Or Monthly Magic Box hasn't shipped my box in the last two months and they keep auto-charging me, something is wrong. So those are obvious examples. Where we have an interesting, where I might believe something is a scam and you may not, and vice versa, is in that middle area. And in that middle area, we have um, a lot of interesting ways um, to get support. And they, the, the one commonality that I find between these interesting ways is you can only, you can't say that you are very successful, wealthy, but oh, by the way, I need this $500 camera and I can't afford it. Uh, the best example I have of something in the middle is Craig Berry, but there are so many different examples I could go over with. If you guys find this interesting and this gets over 100 likes, maybe I'll keep making these videos. The one, two, two examples. I'm going to go ahead with Craig Berry and then I'll use another YouTuber as the second example. Craig Berry says that he can drop $20,000 on a dime. He says he doesn't want attention. Like he said, I'm not doing this for attention. I think one of his posts said that. And Craig Berry is the guy who bought all the emotes and I think he bought some other cards and they spiked up in price. But as you can see, he's not doing that every day, so you cannot consistently make money. He's saying that he lives this lavish lifestyle and he's able to support himself from just buyouts, essentially, but buying out reserve list cards, but not many reserve list cards go up in price and they're very hard to get rid of. Uh, and that's why I never dealt with Power 9 because when you're dealing with reserve list cards, conditioning is key. And I never wanted to get, oh, okay, Getting nickel and dime on conditioning for reserve list cards is the worst experience you will ever have. Hey, there's a little nick here. I'm going to take $5 off. Oh, there's another nick here. $10. It's like, dude, seriously, what's going on? But someone who says they can drop 20K and then they can drop 25K and then they can spike this and they spike that and they spike this, it it doesn't make sense to me because then why, and you don't want attention, then why do you keep making these videos asking for attention? And the microphone quality is so low, like the camera quality is a potato camera. It's a lot of people I've met in this community, online, especially online, say, oh, I own Power 9. I own Mint Power 9. I own this. I own that. I'm really, I bought 1,000 copies of Sahili Raw before when she was $5. It's like, okay, if you want attention that much, why didn't you just snap a picture? And if you do snap a picture, then I expect it to be something where I can see the Sahili Raws, right? Like not like a potato camera. So that's the uh, disconnect I have uh, where it seems like you're trying to promote yourself as an MTG finance guru and as this person who has so much money they can spike the market anytime and you don't really want attention. But yeah, all you do is you seek attention and you're shooting on a potato camera. Like, is your phone camera, is your MacBook camera, like, come on, dude, like, dude, like, seriously, why are you sh shooting on a potato camera? Like, are people who say they own cards they, they do not own? And on eBay or Craigslist, God forbid Craigslist, they will take your image, they will take someone else's image. Um, the image of my Liliana of Veils has been used quite often to sell Lilianas of the Veils. Probably either counterfeit ones or ones or fake scammy ones. So if you're taking an image that you don't own and yet you're selling a Power 9 and you're taking someone else's image or you're selling a collection for $20,000 and you just copy someone else's image, which is easy to verify using a website called T-I-N-E-Y-E.com, which will tell you where it's coming from, then you probably don't own that collection and it's probably a big scam and that's, that's it. So the second one, and this is just a call out, he's no longer making YouTube videos, uh, Rocks and Box and 90. Uh, he has left YouTube, and I finally feel like I can say this, but he ran his Patreon the whole time. So it never let, like he stopped running his Patreon. He was running his Patreon the whole time. He didn't have that many people, but he wasn't making videos, and he was really promoting the monthly magic box until the tides turned. And I know that he was the one who, in that Facebook group, was most adamant about attacking me for not supporting magic monthly box. So to represent yourself as the pillar of the community, as this person who will protect the subscribers from, I don't know what, for, I don't know, from MTG Lion who's saying the monthly magic box sucks and he's a Debbie Downer, 
but then to know, to have the information that Mount Monthly Magic Box is a scam, but to continue to produce videos promoting it, ooh, that's a little much, isn't it? And, you know, I don't know. There's other stuff, obviously some names I haven't mentioned, which, you know, I, mm, it could go either way. I don't have enough evidence to say either way, but the evidence is on the guy's channel. You can go on channel, do a search for the monthly magic box, see how much he's pricing the stuff, take the prices to Dave and Ad I showed them the prices on Dave and Ad I attached a link to every item on their Facebook group group and in private i was like hey dude like do you know that this binder is not twenty dollars this is like two dollars on this website here's a link but they kept saying the binder was twenty dollars so when someone misrepresents them i've never said that i'm a great magic player i'm pretty casual now i never well i am okay in mtg finance i guess i've said some things about that uh which would be not great right now but when it comes down to it when you represent yourself as something that you are not, it's very easy to do that on YouTube. It's very easy to do it. If you represent yourself as I'm very wealthy and I get a six figure income, which some have, but I need donations like right now, then how does that make sense to like anyone? Like what? Like what? <laughs> what? what? Like, like, why don't you just work at your six figure income and then just use that money to fund magic the gathering hobby anyway this rant has gone long enough i don't want to bring anyone else into it i my gut feeling is that a lot of you already know what i would say next in the next video it's pretty obvious you know it's pretty obvious and i've been told by some youtubers not to attack them although like i haven't really been part of the drama lately so maybe this will make me part of the drama again and I can get more subscribers. Isn't that how it works? Anyways, I'm joking, of course. Anyways, this is the last dramatic video. We'll go back to MTG Finance and all that stuff. But I know a lot of you wanted to know my take on you know what is a scam and what is not a scam in our community. And yeah, it's so like for me, it would be this way. I would, not, I would not be like, oh, I need you guys to pay for a camera that's $1,000 because I, I want the camera. I would say, huh, okay, well, I've been, I've been, I passed the patent bar when I was 21. So I've been doing patents since I was 14, like if you believe it or not. My sister got her first patent before she was 18, or patent application. Sorry, I should say I'm doing, I was doing patent applications when I was around 14. My sister got applied for her first when she was 18. And I passed my patent bar when I was 21 and patents are something that I currently don't do, but I get a lot of emails. Hey, can you do this for me? Can you do this for me? I'll go and pay you. And I would say, huh, I would just take one of those patent jobs. It would probably pay me 4,000 profit at the end of the conclusion, um, writing up the patent as well as doing a search and stuff. Then I would $4,000. I mean, geez, like how many donations would I really get? Like, wouldn't I just do patents instead of getting donations if I was super successful at patents, right? Like th the logic doesn't really make sense here where you can be super successful, but still have to ask people for $5 because asking them for $5 takes longer than if you just did one patent application or it takes longer than if you just developed, you know, you just had one more client and you developed a software for them. Like, how could it not? So that's the dichotomy I'm having trouble understanding is when someone says that I'm really wealthy and I have money and I have a great job and everything in my life is perfect, then why do you need people to donate to you, right? Don't you just work some more hours at your job or don't you have enough money already? So that's the dichotomy I'm, I'm trying to figure out because for me personally, I make these chat, I make videos and all the money goes to artwork. It all goes to artwork. We do, we, this channel has not been profitable since inception. Our Patreon is like less than $100, I feel like. I don't really know. Like, it, it's not great. Um, and I don't need it to be good because it is whatever. Anyway, we are 20 minutes in. I know half of you guys are like bored and dead and whatever. But hey, that's it. Bye, guys.